everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. I have the great pleasure of introducing to you Andy Steves, who's with us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Abby. Uh, you're on a book tour for your new book, mm -hmm. um, Andy Steves Europe, um, City Hopping on a Budget, mm -hmm. which for us is a big deal because we obviously have a lot of students traveling in Europe, studying abroad in Europe, and further afar in other parts of the world. So tell me a little bit about your tour. So you're start, you started uh, at the University of Kentucky, you're in Washington, and then you're kind of moving along. Mm -hmm. Well, I came over from Seattle, landed okay. in K uh, Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky, and okay. uh, gave a talk at the, uh, uh, at the university there. The Education Abroad Office took very good care of me. Great. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody. <laughs> and, um, and then yesterday, I was speaking at Purdue, okay. and uh, drove up this morning, and then on Sunday, I make my way over to speak at Boston University, UConn, NYU and Columbia over the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. Well, yeah. we're so excited that we could kind of fit into Absolutely. your schedule and we could have you here. here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everyone's very excited. We definitely have a lot of people who are really interested in what you have to say. Um, obviously, students very excited. Um, and thanks so much for people tuning in. Um, I know our followers are kind of coming in as uh, the Facebook Live goes on, so I'll make sure to stop and say hi to those people. Sure, sure. Um, so I think one thing I would like to say is those people who are tuning in, not to forget that we are giving away some books, um, which is right, right here, here, Annie Steve's book, <laughs> right here, and he will actually sign the book. Um, so as long as you enter a question into the feed, um, you basically uh, put yourself in the drawing for, for a free, uh, free book, which is really great because it's all the tips and tricks you need to city hop on a budget. That's right. All right, so let's dive right in. So obviously you're Rick Steve's son, so that has a lot to do uh, of why you love traveling and kind of you being immersed in kind of the travel sector. Um, I kind of want to hear a little bit about how you transitioned from your study abroad experience to kind of this, you know, putting it towards a professional um, idea with, with the company that you have in your book. And so mm -hmm. I'd love to hear about like how you kind of developed that um, and why it's different from other kind of travel guides and travel companies. Sure, absolutely. Well. I got my start, of course, going to Europe every single summer of my life, uh, traveling oh, <laughs> with my family and my dad, Rick Steves, of course. Yeah. Um, so I had the, uh, you know, it was kind of the um, a blessing and a curse. You know, yeah. when, when Rick Steves goes to Europe, it's serious work. He's yeah. updating his guidebooks, he's making his TV shows, he's researching itineraries. Yeah. And um, and so as a family, we were just kind of tacked on to that and he was dragging us all around Europe. Yeah. And so at first, as a little kid, all you want to do is just have the first cheeseburger that you can find, you know, when you're hungry <laughs> right. and, and you're sad about missing your friends' birthdays back home. Yeah. Um, but as time went on, I realized just how special that opportunity was. Mm -hmm. um, during my undergrad at the University of Notre Dame, just down the way from here, um, I, I worked as a tour guide for my dad's company okay. in my undergrad, and then um, I got the chance to study abroad. Mm -hmm. And that's where things changed for me. Because and where did you study abroad? Uh, I went to Rome at John Cabot okay. University. Okay. And um, up until that point in my life, I had always done the tourist thing. I had mm -hmm. always come into a city, checked it out, explored, connected as much as I could, mm -hmm. but then moving on every few days onto the next place. Right. And the problem with that is you can see some great uh, sites, you can really engage with cultures as much as possible, mm -hmm. but because you're not there for enough time, you're really just barely scratching the surface. Right. And the difference between traveling backpacking and studying abroad mm -hmm. is you actually get the chance to integrate into the local culture, mm -hmm. plug into the, the scene there, yeah. and really make connections with people from from all around the world mm -hmm. and who, who share, you know, who have different backgrounds and different perspectives, yeah. but you know, we share a common humanity. And yeah. I think whether you study in Rome or London or, you know, uh, Bangkok, it doesn't matter. Spending four months at least in, in a place really gives you a chance to look at your your upbringing and your own background from, mm -hmm. a, from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And as the world continues to shrink, I think that's so important in, in, in this day and age. Mm -hmm. And so, believe it or not, I, um, I was studying uh, Italian language and literature mm -hmm. and industrial design as my, as my undergrad wow. degrees. Okay. So I was definitely on a different track. Very I was, different. <laughs> I, was, um, I was, you know, midway through an application to do a master's in design in Italy. Oh, wow. Um, when, you know, this business need opportunity and um, and my own experience really kind of convalesced into the idea for my company, Weekend Student Adventures. Mm -hmm. And so what we do now, what I've been working on for the last six years, is offering 
students an opportunity to travel on the weekends, all within balance, of mm -hmm. course, because you don't want to travel too much right. when you're studying abroad. It's really important to stay put, it's too. It's always about happy medium. But, um, yeah. Exactly, ha having that balanced approach. Mm -hmm. But when you do want to get to Paris or when you do yeah. want to go to Budapest, I am passionate about connecting students with an efficient, affordable, and culturally engaging way to mm -hmm. see that city as much and as thoroughly as possible in the limited time that you have. Yeah. And so um, I came up with that idea during my undergrad at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Everything was going sideways in the job market in 2008, 2009, 2010. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I have this business idea. I have this opportunity in front of me. Mm -hmm. I want to offer something for this market, and I really got nothing to lose otherwise. Right. You know? <laughs> it worked so, out for my dad okay. Yeah, so exactly. So, so I figured I'd give it a shot, and yeah. that's what I've been doing full-time since 2010 when I graduated. Amazing. And and then I spent all of 2015 writing this guidebook, really right. just just a, a brain dump, literally. It just straight into just typing away all the tips and tricks and practical um, insights that I've kind of picked up over the years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, just running a tour company, um, taking the best that I could pick up from, you know, the best in the business, my right. dad, um, but also layering on, um, you know, uh, modern technology. Yeah. I mean, to have a, a, a smartphone to whip out in your pocket and you can just yeah. make hostel reservations or flight reservations so or whatever yeah. on the fly I mean that's that's night and day compared to what um, uh, what my dad had to do back, back in the day right. so so I felt like there was an opportunity for a really solid guidebook for the budget traveler mm -hmm. of any age right. that wants to also travel efficiently and affordably awesome. so that, that's just a little bit of background about the company and, and of course my book there fantastic yeah. well for those who maybe have just joined a few seconds ago again I just want to reiterate we're so happy to have Annie Steve's here with us, um, author of uh, Annie Steve's Europe City Hopping on a Budget. Um, so we're going to talk about some tips and tricks for city hopping on a budget, uh, maybe even specifically for the study abroad sector because we have so many. That's what we do at yes. IES Abroad. We have so many lovely students studying abroad with us in various locations. So let's go into the book because sure. that's that's what we're, we're here to talk about. So yeah. let's do that. So in this day and age, you talk about, you know, it's all kind of, it's digital. It's at the, you know, your fingertips. So why print? Guide. My, my short answer is uh, books don't run out of batteries. You know, so, <laughs> so cell so phones true. cell phones are great <laughs> until they die and you're just like, where am I? You know, yeah. but for me, I'm a, I'm a tactile person. I yeah. like to write in the margins. Yeah. I like to highlight stuff that I like. Okay. I cross out stuff that I don't, you know, that I've read and I just decided it's not for me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and to put it all into, you know, this, this nice size where you can um, just keep it in your pocket. You yeah. can tear out chapters. Um, I thought there was, there was just a need for it. And um, why a book, you know, maps, uh, listings, um, a recommended three-day itinerary, yeah. to put that all in one place and something that you can actually flip through, right. it just made all the sense in the world. Hopefully, you know, down the road, maybe we'll develop an app. We have tons yeah. of uh, travel tips and resources on my website mm -hmm. at andysteves.com mm -hmm. and wsaeurope. Dot yeah. com. But um, uh, but in the future, I want to I want to develop an app, hopefully, and, and then we can uh, have the best of both worlds there. Awesome. So yeah. I think we've got a question from some of the people who are watching. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Um, so Kaya, what do we have for Andy? One question we have right now is from Mirin, and they're asking, have you flown Ryanair? Your thoughts on no frills airlines? Uh, I have flown Ryanair with Ryanair. Thanks, Mirren, was it? Mirren, thanks for the question. And I have uh, actually tutorials on my YouTube channel all about playing the budget airline game. First off, there's dozens of budget airlines all across Europe and around the world, so never search just with one airline first. Go to the search engines and then book directly with the best airline and option that you find. Now with Ryanair, um, we hear all sorts of horror stories. Everybody knows about Ryanair because they seem to screw over the most of their customers, so they get the most press, and you know it's a very interesting marketing plan. But uh, for them, it seems to work somehow. My one piece of feedback, if you do fly with Ryanair, I never say don't just rule it out you know, entirely, but read every single bit of fine print because they mean it and they'll hold you to it. Specifically, check in online ahead of time or pay 40 euros at the airport. Print out your boarding pass, the piece of paper, before you go to the airport. Otherwise, again, it's 40 or 50 euros just to print that piece of paper out. Mm -hmm. And um, and read every single bit of fine print because they mean it and they'll hold you to it. So uh, good luck with, with Ryanair, man. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think we have another question as well. Yeah, can I throw out one more? Yeah. This is from Mary Christina, and she asks, any tips for trying different foods if you can't read the menus? 
<laughs> That's a great question. And if you find yourself in a restaurant, Mary Christina, uh, where they don't have an English menu, where the servers don't speak English, you've hit the tourist jackpot, okay? <laughs> that means that they don't get tourists, so you've really found a unicorn, you know? And so um, look around, um, try out a, just a little bit of local language, um, and, and ask people what they would recommend. I find myself in that situation sometimes. Um, but one app that I would recommend, it used to be called Word Lens, L-E-N-S. But I think Google bought them out, and so you just download Google Translate, and it can actually visually translate the words when you point your smartphone's camera at the menu. Like say it's, it's, it's in Spanish, on your screen, it'll visually translate those words into English. It's incredible, the technology that we have in our pocket. So ask around, find those local spots for sure. If you're having a hard time, download uh, Google Translate and that'll help you out too. Wonderful, so I guess kind of along those lines, um, we're talking about food, we're talking about you know, using some of these apps that can be really helpful mm -hmm. um, tools when you are studying abroad, especially um, you know, as a student. Um, so, in terms of accommodations, so you're, you're, so you're city hopping, right? You're mm -hmm. trying to go through uh, a number of places over your semester abroad and you're going away. What are some apps or what are some ways of finding some cheap, <coughs> safe, um, you know, accommodation for some of these students that, who will be doing that in Europe or further afield? Sure. Um, well, first off, forget everything that the movie taught you. Hostels are fun, they're safe, <laughs> and they're clean. I've had great experiences in hostels all around the world. Um, if you do f travel and stay in hostels, definitely bring your own lock because unfortunately there have been instances that I've heard of that I've you know, experienced that, uh, where, where there's just petty theft. Um, don't travel with a lot of valuables uh, also. Don't travel with uh, jewelry, too much cash, mm -hmm. um, too much um, uh, any sentimental items that you just can't afford to lose. Leave those at home so you cannot have to worry about that, okay? Um, I've had great experiences in hostels all around the world. I absolutely love the social aspects of hostels um, and, and they're an affordable way to travel. Otherwise, Airbnb has been a godsend for me because I love to, what that does is it connects you immediately with the local. You know, you gotta get over that mental hump of staying in somebody's home, but once you do that, it connects you straight away with the local. Um, you just gotta pay attention to the hidden fees. You might see a nightly price uh, on Airbnb when you do your initial search, but then the dates that you actually book might have weekend prices, the cleaning fee might be exorbitant, there might be, the, and then Airbnb takes its cut as well. So before you actually click book, be sure and analyze those costs and make sure that it's giving you that value so that you really are comparing apples to apples when it comes to costs for Airbnb and hostels. So keep, keep that in mind as well. Awesome, yeah. so you're, you're at your Airbnb in, let's say, Prague, and um, one of the things that you talk about in the book, which I think is fantastic, is ways to kind of see what's all in the city, uh, the iconic spots, but mm -hmm. on uh, almost like a, a speedy way of doing it, but also a cheap way of doing it. And so I just would love for you to kind of tell our viewers, who thanks so much again for everyone who has tuned in, um, mm -hmm. to tell us kind of how to work that. Because it is daunting sometimes going to something like the London Eye, the line is forever long on a Wednesday at two, mm -hmm. and it's quite mm -hmm. expensive. So I would just- Approaching a new city? Yeah, yeah. I, think, yeah mm -hmm. I think so. Um, I, I love bike tours. I love walking tours. Mm -hmm. uh, walking tours, uh, free walking tours have popped up all over Europe in the last few years. Um, those are a great way to get oriented, and I'm definitely that Boy Scout at the front of the group, always just like making sure that I'm hearing the guide as he's speaking, he or she is speaking. Um, but also, when you're walking from point to point, I love to pick their brains in that extra time, and I'll even offer to take the guide out for a beer or a coffee afterwards, because for another five bucks, what you can do is get another hour of insights into that city, and they can give you all sorts of tips that they don't have uh, time to take you on in that scripted three hour kind of orientational walk. Mm -hmm. I much prefer to kind of get their oft script opinions. And I found uh, that to be a great way to get to get oriented. Yeah. And then your, your secondary question was, um, what about all the lines? Yeah. You know, what travelers need to decide is what is what is more important? You know, you gotta decide, do I appreciate flexibility and spontaneity more or do uh, and and risk standing in hours long lines mm -hmm. or do i want to lock in you know my entry time to the Anne frank house in amsterdam yeah. or like you said the london eye yeah. in, in london skip that line um and and not have to worry about standing wasting valuable hours just standing around mm -hmm. and so it's up to really you the traveler you the viewer to decide 
Do you appreciate that flexibility more, or um, do you prefer not having to waste time in lines? So that's a decision that, that yeah. the traveler is going to have to make. So I do think we have another question, but the one thing I kind of wanted to go back to, because I think it's really interesting, and it's my philosophy when I'm traveling, is mm -hmm. you know, someone like the tour guide, you're right, you have a finite amount of time, and you can't mm -hmm. eke out all of the knowledge. So a great way of kind of being able to kind of learn more about the city or the culture is maybe having that personal connection and meeting new people. Mm -hmm. um, so some people are great about, you know, very extroverted, very excited to meet new people and say, hey, do you want to go do this with me? Um, some people may not as much. Do you have any sure. tips for how to like break the ice and maybe try and yeah. meet some of those locals <laughs> that'll give you all the you know the, the top secrets yeah. of the city? Well, I, I know it's it's a lot easier said than done to you know just just go and chat up the locals you know um, and but you just got to be that extrovert you know for me I. When I'm home in Seattle, I just love, you know, just crashing on mom's couch. I, I am that introvert that just kind of takes care of my own stuff. But anytime I'm on the road, I'm always just, you know, I've come up kind of with a, uh, uh, not a list of questions, but just some ideas to kind of pull out some solid information. Mm -hmm. um, but also, one of the key ways that I love to customize my own travel is to bring my hobbies and my passions and my interests with me while I'm on the road traveling. And I Google the heck out of whatever it is that I'm into and see if there's any upcoming events um, down the road in yeah. any of these cities that, mm -hmm. I, that I'm planning on visiting. And I use those as checkpoints uh, for a longer itinerary to make sure I'm in you know, Budapest if there's a music festival yeah. or if there's a, you know, a photography exhibit in Paris, maybe I'll you know, make, make a point to be there at that point in time. But the, the great thing about that is not only are you really kind of customizing your, your travel to what you're interested yeah. in, but it puts you in the same place and time as other people who share that same interest from all different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be the best way to, um, to interact with people from all over the place who uh, immediately you have something to, to, that you share in common. And right. from there you can have a conversation and build a friendship yeah. rather than just talking to the person in the next bar stool you yeah. know, at, at the pub. Absolutely, so, and sometimes yeah. these people can be friends for life, as you've kind of you know alluded to. I think it's mm -hmm. very true. Mm -hmm. um, you can always go back. It's always nice to visit friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So great. So let's take that question that Kaya had um, for us, Kaya. Yeah. The next question we have from a viewer is, which housing option do you recommend when studying abroad? Oh, that's that's a good question. Um, because for me, in, in my experience, I was plugged straight into a um, kind of a student apartment arrangement that that Notre Dame had had uh, decided on. So I didn't have a choice per se. But um, I've you know. Uh, homestays can be an incredible experience. Sure, it might be jarring when your um, uh, what's the Spanish word for like mom, mom, like the house mom, mother, or, or um, but uh, th there's a term for it. But like the, the 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 mother of the house tells you that you can only take showers seven to eight and six to seven <laughs> or something each day. Yeah. Um, that might you know take some getting used to. But as soon as you get past those kind of um, uh, little hurdles, you can definitely. Uh, become much more fluent than you would otherwise if you ended yeah. up staying with Americans. Mm -hmm. You can um, really count on a really authentic experience. Um, and so homestays are an excellent way to uh, uh, to find your accommodations as long as you're ready to go along with the flow and, and, uh, and, and really engage. Yeah, I think that was a great question because that mm -hmm. is something that, you know, um, for a lot of students that are studying abroad, what, what avenue do you go down if it's not already predetermined mm -hmm. as to what you have to do? Mm -hmm. um, so one thing I do also want to talk about is some of the, you've got some really great kind of three-day plans in here, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy. Um, so when you're trying to pack it all in, it's nice to kind of have like a, a plan that's been done before and mm -hmm. it's going to, you know, deliver really fantastic results. You're going to be very happy. So can you just explain to us, maybe highlight a three-day plan that you particularly like or were fond of and how you kind of came to those conclusions? Sure, sure. Well, all of the three-day itineraries that you find in my book have actually been the itineraries that I designed for my tours. And the cool thing about mm -hmm. that is these have been tried and true itineraries with hundreds and thousands of students going through them uh, to, to try out the timing, to yeah. understand you know, um, the right order of things. For me, when it comes to a three-day visit in any city, I love to arrange it uh, chronologically in the sense okay. that I love to check out ancient Rome on my first day there, so the Colosseum and yeah. the, uh, the Forum and the Pantheon, of course. Yeah. And then the next day I go to the Vatican 
uh, see the Sistine Chapel, of mm -hmm. course, in St. Peter's, at Baroque and Renaissance Rome. And for me, that just helps to I me mean, to kind of wrap my mind around the complex history of mm -hmm. any of these any of these cities. Right. Um, when it comes to you know the history of a uh, of a city, or I mean the the 3D itinerary that I like of a city, um, yeah, that that would be it. For, That'd be for, it. For Rome, yeah. <laughs> As you say, you knew that really, one really well. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah. awesome, fantastic. So I think we actually have another question um, for, and thanks again for everyone who's viewing. Um, it's really great to have you and it's great to have Andy here. So keep the questions coming. These are fantastic. So Kaya, what's the next one? Next question is from Kyler. How do I balance visiting other countries with exploring different places within my own country of study? <clears throat> That's a great question. Uh, what was the name? Ka Kyler. 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 Uh, thanks for the question. Um, uh, there's, you know, it's it's really important to, to spend time, you know, you can spend a lifetime in London or Madrid or Rome and barely scratch the surface. Um, get Break yourself out of that uh, trek between your accommodation and your classes. Be sure and get out of that routine and explore different neighborhoods around town. If you find yourself just going to the pubs, you know, and uh, where, where there's American-oriented uh, drink specials or student nights, that's not what study abroad is all about. So uh, definitely stay put in the city, but find out where the more interesting and more local neighborhoods are. And kind of the, um, the rule of thumb that I think is a, is a good approach is why don't you break your, your weekends and, and travel plans into a third, a third, a third, a third stand put in the city, a third traveling locally and regionally, and then maybe if it's your first time to Europe, who can blame you for wanting to go to Dublin or to get out to, to Krakow and see those amazing cities when it's just a 30 euro flight, you know. So um, I found that approach to be, um, uh, to be relatively balanced and then you can decide from there what, what works for you. Awesome. Yeah, I think traveling when you're abroad, you're, you're there already. So why not mm -hmm. take, you know, the advantage of doing that? Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to transition slightly, um, unless we have another question at the moment. We do. Oh, we do. <laughs> and I will not be transitioning. I'd love to get the viewers' questions more than yeah. my own. So yeah. let's go. This one's from Claudia. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to travel solo or do you recommend having a travel buddy? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the question, Claudia. Um, Generally, Europe is safer than America. You know, you got you got to get that into your mind. Europe is a safe place. It's a very safe place. Um, the the biggest thing that you generally have to worry about is uh, pickpockets. Um, but uh, beyond that, you're it's it's generally a safe place. Um, if you're gonna travel solo and as a as a female, you need to um, just keep your wits about you and um, ask around and understand uh, the 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 safe neighborhoods in the city and then the neighborhoods that locals would recommend staying away from. Um, it's it's tough to give one general rule, of course, because um, you know the, what what seems safe to us in the states, like bright lights lights all down the streets, um, you won't necessarily see that in Europe, and so it's hard to perceive necessarily and differentiate what is safe versus uh, a neighborhood that you maybe would be better off not going to. Um, if you feel confident, if you've traveled around to major American cities uh, before or other international cities, I think you'd do just fine. But uh, for a lot of people, having the comfort of a travel buddy really helps as well. And they can take pictures of you and videos for that you helps, so yeah. it's always yeah, yeah. a bit of a documentary so you can partner put the uh, selfie stick away and, it, yeah. you know, and that's another <laughs> thing is um uh the travel is is such a fun experience and to share that with somebody is also it, it kind of adds another level to it so um I, I always enjoy traveling with friends awesome all right it looks like we have another question as well kaya i'll just ask this one and then you can take it away again okay <laughs> um, this is from sarah where to you is the hidden gem in europe and why Ooh. No pressure. Uh, I, I have a few. My, my main task is uh, picking one. Um, thanks, uh, thanks for the question, Sarah. Um, I, you know what? I absolutely love the city of Krakow. Um, Krakow is Poland's student city. Imagine a, a, a city of a million people, 200,000 of them are students. And so you can bet that there's a really fun, um, there's a great hostel culture, there's um, very affordable food. I mean, a plate of pierogies is about $2, if you can believe it, and a beer is a dollar. Um, you can't find that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, but the town of Krakow, the old town, is barely six blocks by four blocks, and it's um, 
you still have the old moat running around the old medieval town. Um, you have the Schindler factory there, which is what the movie was based on, Schindler's List. Um, Americans oftentimes associate Krakow directly with Auschwitz, and of course you need to take the day trip out to Auschwitz and remember the victims of the Holocaust. Um, but Krakow itself is is an incredible city in its own right, and I would highly recommend getting out there. Even though even if it's not at the top of your list, move it up there, and and you won't be disappointed. Great, great answer. So my question, and it was something that I struggled with as a student when I was studying abroad, is really making sure that I managed my my budget. I knew kind of what I could spend and, and everything. But if students are really at a loss as to where to put their money, is there something that you would say, really save up for this or really try and put it towards this? Is yeah. there anything that you would suggest? Yes, absolutely. Um, what I see students do, and I, was, I did this too, is you're so excited to get there. In the first <laughs> couple weeks, you might go out just about every night. You're so excited to explore all these different places. Yeah. Remember that those, those drinks and those activities really add up quickly. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen that happen where students blow through most of their budget in the first month or so of yeah. the semester, and then ge you're like, geez, only, I have three more months, what am I gonna <laughs> do? I gonna do so yeah. please pace yourself a little bit, and understand that where Americans go, where tourists go, you're paying another 50% more, at least, than local prices if you can find where the locals are hanging out. Yeah. That also, eating out, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, as well will add up. What I found is that you know students generally, and I was part of this too, is I was in high school, mom and dad were feeding me, went to college, all I had to do was swipe my student card at the, at the um, cafeteria, that was taken care of, and then all of a sudden you fly over to Europe and you're responsible for getting your own groceries, you're responsible for yeah. cooking for yourself, um, and so uh, you don't realize how, how much food costs really do add up and really do eat mm -hmm. into your budget so definitely hit the uh, grocery stores and understand how to uh, make a few uh, you know uh, develop some some recipes as a, as a go-to you know that's, yeah. that's what we did in Rome I was the bruschetta guy oh. um, I, we had other <laughs> friends who were great at making lasagna or yeah. you name it but we all kind of developed our own specialty and we'd come together and the nice thing about making bruschetta is you're done before the real uh, meal gets uh, gets going so uh, then I got to sit back and relax but um, that was a lot of fun there Great. Well, um, so thanks again for everybody who is kind of tuning in. If you have any last minute questions, um, please, by all means, ask them. We'd love to hear them. Um, so one thing that I just wanted to let the viewers know is, you know, if they're really interested in this book and they want to learn more about it, where where can they get it? Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, take it away. I uh, absolutely uh, want to say support your local bookstore. Um, and if they don't have it in stock, you can always ask for it. But otherwise, of course, it's available online, the big Amazon.com, uh, of course. Uh, it's, there's an electronic version uh, yeah. available as well. Awesome. And of course, the big chains like Barnes & Noble um, have it as well. So it's, it's in all uh, bookstores with a travel section. Okay, great. Um, Kaya, do we have a question? Yes. Awesome. It's a good end note question. Oh, okay. I've got a, I've got a pretty fun end note question. This is going to be okay. like the end note for <laughs> the end this note. one first. All right. It's from Stephanie, who <laughs> also let us know that Senora is the word. For senora. The senora, that's, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> and her question is, what's the best travel tip you've ever received from your dad or others? You know, it doesn't come down to a single travel tip. It's really, um, traveling with my dad growing up, I really picked up uh, a, menta a traveling mentality, kind of a travel philosophy, that travel really is a way to be a cultural ambassador. And you know, when you take the time to understand the cultures that you're visiting, learn a little bit of the language that they speak, understand a little bit where they're coming from, uh, that differentiates you from all the other tourists coming through just taking selfies in front of the Eiffel Tower. Travel is so much more than that, okay? And as soon as you um, show that you've put in the, the effort, the blood, sweat, and tears to understand a little bit about the local cultures, um, that's just kind of what I gleaned from my dad just over the years. And I'm really passionate about sharing um, that approach to travel on my tours, on our websites, and of course in my, in my book as well. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that you're, you, you really talk about how to understanding culture and appreciating it. Mm -hmm. Something at IS Abroad, and, and myself as an IS Abroad alum, mm -hmm. we're all trying to be global citizens, and we're mm -hmm. trying to make sure that we all have an idea of the world outside of our front yards. Mm -hmm. And so I would just love to get your perspective on the importance of study abroad, um, the education kind of benefits, and then also the career benefits, and just kind of the world view and how maybe you've dealt with that. That, that's a complex question. It is a there. complex question. <laughs>
So um, let's see. So the, the importance of study abroad. Uh, I touched on this a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but it gives you a different perspective on on your your um, the the culture that you grew up in. And uh, there you understand that um, you know the way we do things as Americans isn't the only way to do things, and oftentimes it's not the right way to do things. And so when you travel, when you um, act as that cultural ambassador, when you become a global citizen, I think uh, studying abroad gives you that opportunity to really give you a leg up on that. Yeah. Now. When you do study abroad and when you do come back and, and come back to the States, finish your undergrad, and then you're looking for a job, it's so art uh, important to articulate the value of study abroad. Don't say it was good. Don't list off where you studied and leave it at that. G dive into the life experiences that you picked up outside of the classroom, but also in inside the classroom is important, of course. But I feel that you, you learn uh, just as much or more outside the classroom about yourself, um, about uh, uh, figuring out solutions to difficult challenges, um, um, intercultural communication, that you can definitely apply that in the, um, uh, in the professional uh, setting that you're, that you're applying for. And then um, when it comes to the importance of studying, it is called study abroad, of course. And so it's <laughs> yeah. not travel abroad, it's, it's study abroad. Yeah. And so um, see if you can't sign up for classes that will really give you a chance to see a city. I was in Rome, and so I signed up for uh, Renaissance Rome and its monuments. So I spent um, the, the only day, that the, it was two days uh, that we spent in a classroom, the first day and the, and the day that we took the exam. Yeah. Otherwise, we were seeing these beautiful churches, uh, monuments, sculptures, uh, artwork. And the amazing thing about that is you're not you know, learning about it in a textbook or in a PowerPoint presentation from a professor in our history class back home, you're actually seeing it with your own two eyes. Right. And I think um, for me, that made it so much, uh, uh, yeah, so much easier to just engage with and really appreciate. Yeah, fantastic. So that, that was a fun question, but I have a more fun question to end Wonderful. this on. <laughs> Not quite as complex, I promise. So what is the first thing that comes to mind when I say London? Uh, the, the amazing, um, uh, unique identities of all the different neighborhoods that make up London. It's mm -hmm. a, it really is a city of villages. You got, of course, the banking district, but you got the trendy east side, you got the posh west side, you got the, um, the up and coming south side of town. Um, I absolutely, you know, a lot of people write off London as, oh, it's just another English speaking city. I was guilty of that too, until I went and actually designed my tours there and, and started leading tours there. Um, but I can't get enough of London these days. Yeah. I love going back and, and really um, just exploring a new neighborhood and seeing what's, what's up there. All right, and if you have one word that comes to mind for the rest of these cities, I would just love to see sure. what the just one just word the pops, version, the short yeah. word, I like, I, I love London too. <laughs> yeah. um, Paris. Um, uh, 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 elegant. Uh, Barcelona. Um, Fiesta. Oh, Amsterdam. Um, uh, alternative. Dublin. Uh, crack, and I need to qualify that. Crack is, uh, you know, in Irish, in 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 uh, uh, casual Irish, yes. Hey, how's the crack? That just means what's the life of the party. That's um, Irish. Is, uh, a crack is Irish for uh, life of the party. So yeah, what's the crack? <laughs> Madrid. Madrid. Um, uh, I want I want to go back to elegance, but uh, but um, you know. Uh, su su surprisingly fun, um, delicious food, and uh, and wonderful people. That was more than one word, but I uh, guess you give a lot to Madrid yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a soft spot, I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final question, other place to go other than Europe, what's on your bucket list? Um, Just one place. This, well, this last, uh, uh, earlier this year, I spent a month in Colombia. Oh, wow. And oh my gosh, that's such an incredible country. I absolutely love it. And, um, you know, our parents and uh, Narcos are, the, the Netflix show, mm -hmm. of course, are giving, a, um, our parents have a perception of Colombia, of course, based on what was happening uh, that Narcos is based on. Um, and, and of course, those are real, very real concerns. But Colombia is bursting into the 21st century with optimism, mm -hmm. uh, much lower crime rate. They're wrapping up their um, uh, tragic uh, Civil War conflict with the FARC. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I'm so excited to see that country kind of come into its own uh, uh, you know, deserved uh, 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 place in the world. And, and so I spent uh, 10 days in Medellin and that was just incredible to see all the public projects and, and uh, uh, democratic infrastructure that they're investing in there. And to see that change um, in, in just a few years is, is really something special and I think we could learn a lot from it.
Awesome. Well, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for being with us, Andy. And thank you so much for the viewers who um, are, you know, watching this Facebook Live. You can actually see the Facebook Live again on our Facebook page, IES Abroad. Um, and also, like I said, you can get Andy's book at your local bookshop um, mm -hmm. online or at Barnes & Noble somewhere. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Abby, for the wonderful questions. Thanks, viewers, for your questions as well. And thanks uh, to IES for having me. All right. Thank you.